Hi, I'm Dave, and I want to talk today about solderless breadboards. These guys. I'm sure many people have seen these before. It's a great piece of equipment for quickly and easily connecting electrical components on the fly. Um, probably more important than that is it's quick and easy to correct your circuit once you've already built it and you think you've got it right because inevitably something's going to have to change. So what are these things for and how do they work? Well, they're for taking components and plugging them in. Voila, just like that. You see that resistor is plugged in and you can use it to make connections from one place to another without having to put any solder on the board. I did it in two seconds and bam, it's gone again. So how are the connections made? And this is probably one of the more important things to understand about the breadboards. So I marked on my breadboard, let's go right side up, this black line here that's going along this whole row of holes. All of these are connected. They're not connected to these ones above it. It's I marked exactly over these holes. And those are all connected. Similarly, these holes are all connected. Every one of these five holes are connected. They're not connected anywhere else, only to these five pins. And then we have this guy is also connected. So every row here, or column I guess, is connected not across this break in the middle. So five pins on this side are connected, five pins on this side are connected, they are not connected even though they line up. Alright? So you can find diagrams online, and you can print them out and put them on your wall, which are very convenient. Um, the most important things to remember about these boards though isn't the connections. Um, it's when and how to use them well. So they do some things really well. I can put parts in, take parts out, I can move them around, I can change values, I can do that all very easily. Things that they don't do so well are projects that have a high speed clock or high speed any component, so if you're moving things at more than 100 kilohertz or megahertz, you would probably want to shy away from these kinds of designs, and the reason is there's a lot of capacitance from one pin to the next to the next, I think something like 12 picofarads per pin. So uh, that really adds up if you're trying to move fast speeds. Another thing you wouldn't want to do is put a lot of current through here. So if you're trying to drive an ultra bright Cree LED that does a watt, or if you're trying to drive a motor or something like that, you won't want to put it through here because it's not capable of holding that or carrying that much current. All right. So what might you find as a common error in using these boards. And this is the most important part and really why I'm doing this video. Is they're very simple, but they uh, get messed up all the time. I mess them up all the time. And the most common error is remembering how the connections are made. I've been doing this for a long time and still sometimes I forget that you can't assume that this is this row and this row are bridged across that break. They're not. Uh, so you always want to double check your connections or even better, have somebody else double check your connections. Another common mistake that people make is uh, shorting the wires that are sticking out. So if I have two resistors plugged in like this, you'll notice the two resistors are not plugged into the same row. So neither pin of both resistors are connected until somebody sneezes and ends up pushing this up. Whoops! Now these two pins are shorted, not because they're connected to the breadboard, but because right here they've been knocked together. And that has got to be the most common error that I've ever seen. Once you put more than 10 or 20 components on this, inevitably you're going to try and fiddle around somewhere and knock one component into the next one. So that's something that happens. You want to watch out for that at every turn. Another problem that happens is uh, these boards wear out. They're, they're built with little spring-loaded connections, or I guess just connections like this, and a part will slide in and it depends on this friction force or this normal force to hold that part and make the electrical connection. So if the part's worn out and you put a part in here and it doesn't quite make connection, you're going to have a problem. 
and that'll drive you mad because it's not one of those things that works sometimes and then doesn't work other times. It's something that occurs only when you're not looking at it. And then when you look close, it works. And then you look away and it fails. And you look close and it works. And it drives you up the wall. We want to make sure that um, you don't put too much force in there. That will make the boards wear out quicker. And you can actually, if you really push and wiggle, you can make this component go further in than it's supposed to. There's ways in this board for it to sneak around and make connections that you wouldn't be expecting. So you want to kind of be gentle with these by, by putting them in and kind of sliding only as far as they want to go. If you force or if you jiggle too much, there's probably something wrong and you should re reinsert the part. You could also make these wear out faster by using thicker wires. So if you have some diodes or if you have some um, transistors that want to go in the small hole and they're a little bit bigger, you may want to think twice about that. You can do it, you can jam it in there, but that might be the last time that that hole works for you. And it's always a good idea. As soon as you notice any holes failing, if something's loose connection or worn out, throw the whole thing away. It's way better to pay the eight or 10 bucks to replace it after a couple years than to save another failure for your next project. So that's solderless breadboards. They work great in a lot of conditions. Um, you just gotta watch yourself and be careful because they can be more heartache than they're worth.